Morning YouTube, it's February the 14th, Valentine's Day, a day that has never had much significance to me uh, due to the fact that I'm a man. <laughs> I, I really resent being manipulated uh, by advertisers and, and retailers and so forth, and that's what Valentine's Day is all about. Um, it's funny, uh, women get really excited about Valentine's, uh, Valentine's Day. It's apparently a huge thing to them uh, if things don't work out for my Valentine's Day. I don't know. Some things, some things you just got to grow out of. Uh, I am, well, it doesn't matter who I am. Welcome to the Bubba Continuum. That's my channel. And as I often say, I am not Bubba. That is not my name. A Bubba is a person who uses tools badly. And I created the, the channel name because I was going to talk about tools and how I use them very badly and, and uh, break things and make a mess. Um, so if you want to call me Bubba in the comments, that's up to you, but it's not me. <laughs> so... What do I want to talk about today? Well, I haven't put up a video in a while. I tried to put one up the other day. You know, I, I switched over to this webcam now. I was using um, an action cam, and I really got tired of the way it distorted things. It made me look like a Sesame Street character. I mean, more than I do naturally, and I thought that was unacceptable. And I thought the resolution was too high. You don't, you don't need crazy high resolution to blabber on YouTube. I don't, I don't know why people are so obsessed with, with high resolution. It's really, it's really there's a limit to what you can see with the human eye. There's a limit, limit to how good res resolution needs to be. And once you get past 720p, it all, it all kind of looks the same. But it, takes, it makes things take a lot longer to upload when you have a lot of resolution. So uh, I got this webcam, started working with it, and I made a video. And I had a problem with the video and the audio being out of sync, and I, I use Resolve, which is this free software, and I, I couldn't make them match up. And it was late, and I, it was late when I started making the video, and then when I had to edit the video, I said, well, this is too much. I'm going to bed, so I'm just going to delete the video. Not too sure what I said in it. It was probably uh, life-changing. Sorry about that. You're not going to get to hear it. So t today I'm starting early. It's still morning, and uh, I'm hoping that if this thing ends up out of sync, that I'll, I'll be able to fix it. There's supposed to be an easy fix for it, but of course, you know, things never turn out to be as simple as you want them to be. What am I, what do I want to talk about today? I would like to try, try to go over some of the things I talked about in the last video, the deleted video, the never uploaded video. Um, it seems like I talk a lot about things that don't matter here. You know, I talk about, uh, Well, I, I talk a lot about my tools, and I've been, I've been talking, I don't know if I covered this in, in the last video that was actually uploaded, but I, I've talked a lot about my new ice cream machine. You know, I, I kind of figured the world was coming to an end, the rapture is upon us, I might as well have good ice cream. And I had a huge pile of, uh, of points stored up on a credit card, and I, I bought a $650 ice cream machine, and now I make the best ice cream on earth as far as I know. It's just, it turns out I have a real aptitude for it, a real gift. I only make three flavors at the moment, but uh, anyway, just it's just it makes your knees buckle. There's no reason for me ever to buy ice cream again. It would have to, I'd have to be an idiot. So uh, I talk about things like that, and I, I don't know how much that helps people in their lives, especially at, at, at this time when everything's kind of winding up and the world's gone crazy and America's lost. I have this problem where I, I go to the news. I try not to do it much. I really try not to do it much. And I, I, ask, I ask God, you know, help me not to look at the news because it's a waste of time for, for the most part. But uh, I find myself looking at the news, and I'll go to my blog or I'll, I'll text a friend or something, and I'll talk about how this horrible thing has happened. Generally political because, uh, you know, the Antichrist is a, is a political leader. He's not just he's, – he's both religious and political, whereas Jesus Christ was, was only a religious leader. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. And he said, my kingdom is inside you. Well, the Antichrist doesn't see things that way because the Antichrist is basically an incarnation of Satan. And Satan is weak and puny. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. So uh, he has to use, he has to cheat. And he cheats through politics. He likes to use politics because, you know what God wants to do. He wants to rule us from inside. And when I say rule, I mean he doesn't, he doesn't want to control us because God, God loves free will so much that he created hell. Um, rather than rather than rather than make people do what's right, 
Anyway, um, we're supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Jews had the law, and then Satan was able to use that against them. But, you know, you, you can, whenever you have a written down law that's immutable, you can always find some way to trap somebody with it. You can always make them do something stupid. You can always turn a, turn a law around and use it to paint someone into a corner. And Satan did that with the Jews very effectively. And he does it with Christians now who are legalists. Uh, but we're supposed to be ruled internally by the Holy Spirit, who has all authority because he's God, and he can tell you to do whatever he wants you to do. He can tell you to do things that uh, ordinarily would be considered sinful. So Satan can't do that because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. You know, He's got little spirits that he runs around, little weak, doomed spirits that are going to burn in humiliation forever. Um, but he, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit, so he can't be connected to us all the time. But it's, so it's nice for him if he has if he has the government on his side to control us and tell us what to do. It's nice if he has people trying to shame us and manipulate us and, and drive us out of our jobs and take money away from us and so forth. That's what's going on now with, with the cancel culture, the cancel kitties. It's uh, exactly what went on in Nazi Germany prior to... Uh, Prior to the war, you know, that they, they found somebody to pick on, the Jews, naturally somebody who's precious to God, and started to accuse them of all sorts of things they didn't do. And they turned them into the problem. You know, the Jews were the problem, and it wasn't enough to make the Jews stop whatever bad thing it was they were doing. They had to be destroyed. They had to be removed from the earth. And that's that's the situation now. You know, it's not enough to, to leave other people alone and, you know, tolerate homosexuality and, uh, and put up with the crazy things your neighbors do and say, that's, that's not enough. Now you have to either be involved in it and support it vocally, or you really just have to be erased from the planet. And when you, when you cancel somebody, I hate that word, because it really, delete is the word that they really are supposed to be using, but they're not smart. So they say cancel instead. Um, when, you, when you try to delete somebody, what you're really doing is, is uh, making it as though they don't exist. It's, it's a form of murder. So uh, that's, what, that's what the cancel kids want from us. It's the, the spirit of antichrist, the spirit of anti-Semitism, same spirit. Any, anyone, any spirit that's against the people God cares about, uh, it, it's the same spirit. It's the spirit of antichrist. Um, anyway, I read, about, I read about these things. And sometimes I'll, I'll write on my blog or, or I'll talk to my friends about it. And I always remind myself and I remind them, there's no point in getting upset about this stuff. There's absolutely no point. There's no point in saying, what are we going to do? Let's form a, a political pact. Let's go uh, march up and down the street with signs. Let's form a militia and storm the Capitol. Those things aren't going to work because America's lost. They're done. It's done. They, it, whatever, however you want to look at it. America's done. It's washed up. It's not coming back. Uh, people, somebody was arguing with me about this today. Uh, America's like a crack whore, you know. W when you have a relative who's a crack whore, and I mean a real, you know, hardcore, serious, heavy-duty crack whore who has no poten no potential to be redeemed, and there are many, many people like that. People people think everyone can be redeemed. It's not true because because of free will. Many people don't want to be redeemed and never will be. Uh, when you have when you have somebody, America's like a crack whore. Is what I'm trying to say. And and when you start getting yourself involved in trying to save America, you are wasting your time. If you've ever had a hardcore addict in your life, someone who cannot be saved, you understand what I'm talking about. Some people think they know addicts because they've known somebody who, who got on Percocet, you know, for a couple of months after, you know, a motorcycle accident or something. That's not a hardcore addict. A hardcore addict is someone who causes their, her parents to lose their, lose their home, their homes, whatever it is, um, steals heirlooms and pawns them, you know, just destroys everything that he or she comes into contact with. That's a hardcore addict. They don't care about you. They don't care what happens to you. They'll take everything you have, and then once you're used up like an empty tube of toothpaste, they will curse you and revile you other people. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll go after you as though you had caused their problems. So... America is like that now. That's what America is like as a whole. You know, America wants pride. America wants homosexuality, um, cruelty, materialism, you name it, fornication. You know, Americans want, want all these things. And they, they don't want God. They have no interest in God. They're much more interested in their gadgets and their Marvel movies and so forth. 
Um, so America is not going to be changed. It's not going to be fixed. That opportunity has passed. And so what I do now is I, I pray for the body of Christ because I, you know, America, as I said in another video, America is not my nation now. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying come after me. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, this isn't treason. I'm not saying put me in a penitentiary someplace uh, because I'm a disloyal person. I'll, I'll obey the laws and all that, and, and and try to try not to get in the way. And I'm not planning. I have no interest in revolution. But I'm just saying, uh, my primary nation is the nation of God, the family of God. And the, the difference between that nation and America is that that nation can be blessed and America can't. So uh, it's a total waste of time to keep plugging away at America when America just just wants to be left alone so, so it can slide into hell. It sounds like a negative thing to say, but you've got to realize if you're, if you're turning away from someone who can't be helped, and t you're also turning towards someone who can be helped. So... It's, it's not a message of failure. It's a message of success. It's God saying, here's where you can be successful. Here's the good soil. And uh, if you do that, you're going to get a much better reward in this life, in the next life for that matter. So, I don't know. I, I've talked about that. And um, I also talked about in my, in my last video, which you'll never see, I talked about things that God has been doing for me. It seems like every week there's some kind of life change and revelation. It just makes things better and better and better and better. Like uh, like the other day, he, re he revealed to me what a bad person I was, which wasn't fun at all, but I was really grateful for it, even while it was happening, because whenever God corrects you, it's like he's opening a gate. He's saying, you're in this prison, and here's the reason for it, and now I'm going to open the gate by telling you what you're, what's bad about you. And you can repent. You can get out. You can leave and go to a better place. So that was wonderful. And, um, he's also, it seems like he's given, he's taken unbelief away from me. And he's made me realize that faith and unbelief, unbelief is not the absence of faith. Unbelief is, is faith in Satan. It's faith in things that are not true. So uh, faith is something and unbelief is something unbelief isn't nothing okay when you when, if someone takes away your faith it doesn't mean you have unbelief it just means there's nothing there you have to be filled with unbelief in order to really fulfill your mission as a child of darkness so god is, is it's the strangest thing it's like he's taken away unbelief from me and it's much much better when i pray ordinarily in the past you know when i would pray i would, I would get this feeling I'd, I'd pray and then i'd have faith for a while and then i'd start thinking well i don't know you know, the, things don't look too good, and I, I, I would have to struggle to believe because there is this opposing force, and now it seems like that's gone. That's just wonderful. And I feel like I have much better authority over spirits, and a lot of people, it, it's just really discouraging to hear Christians say this. They'll say, a Christian can't have a spirit that's not from God. And, of course, what I always say is, well, Jesus had Satan himself. If Jesus can have Satan himself, why can't you have a demon? Look at the Bible. Satan came to, to, to Jesus and tormented him, tempted him. So you think you can't have a demon? Are you crazy? Anyway, I, I can tell God has given me better authority about driving him off and so forth. I feel like he's shown me that my real problem now is not spirits, it's the flesh. So your, your, your flesh is a horrible enemy. It's, it's terrible. It's like being strapped to a dog, you know, in a world full of other dogs that are in heat or... I don't know, open cans of dog food or whatever it is that dogs want. Um, things that smell really bad that it wants to go roll in. I mean, that's what dogs are like. And the dog's not supposed to control you. You know, if you have a dog, the dog's supposed to follow commands. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of most dog owners don't realize that, and they don't teach their dogs anything. But it's true. You know, dogs, dogs can be wonderful, wonderful, useful, happy, healthy, peaceful creatures. Uh, they can be great assets in your life if you train them a little bit. And if not, then they're a pain in the butt to you and to everybody who has to be around you. Well, your flesh is the same way. Um, even if the spirits are gone, and even if the people who are bad influences in your life are gone, you still got this dog, this pig, whatever it is, that, you're, that you, your spirit has been placed in while you're on this earth. 
and you've got to get control over it through things like fasting or, you know, uh, bless, blessings, curses, prayer. So that's been really helpful. Um, but really like to get on top of this thing and, and dominate it. I've often said that uh, one, one of the, something I noticed in life, and I, I mentioned this before, but it's worth talking about. It, worth talking about again. There's a system of authority that's supposed to work in the universe, and God is at the top. You know, it goes God the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, man, Spirit, man, and then if you're married, you know, then it goes below. below. I'm sorry to tell you, this lady's tough. Um, it goes man, uh, woman, children, and then you know, down below that, you have things like pets. Uh, spirits that are against God, things that we're supposed to be have dominion over. And when when uh, when the authority structure is inverted, you have an uh, authority inversion. You can see it in people's lives because things that they're supposed to rule over rule them. Um, men's wives rule them, which is really bad. That's what happened in uh, in the Garden of Eden. Women hate to hear this stuff because women have, have got this poison feminist feminist nonsense in their heads now. But if you look at, at the book of Genesis, what is Adam criticized for? He's criticized for hearkening to the, the voice of his wife. Which doesn't mean you're not supposed to listen to your wife, but it means you're not supposed to obey her when she's wrong, when she's against God. And that's, that was Adam's big problem, you know. Eve was the first person that sinned that we know about. First one, she was a drug abuser. Satan took her, gave her this fruit, showed, showed her this fruit, which was a drug. Uh, I mean, you, you can't eat a fruit and have your consciousness changed unless it's a drug, okay? So it was, it was the first instance of drug abuse, and it was feminism. It was uh, a woman wanted, wanting to control her husband and change the authority structure. Satan should have been at the very bottom, which is where he's going to end up in the end. He's going he's to be the lowest, most hated creature, the most humiliated, the weakest in the lake of fire. That's, that's his position in the universe. That's his rightful place, and he'll be there eventually. But he... He, lift, he was able to lift himself up above human beings who were the caretakers of this planet by getting one human being to listen to him and then and getting her to corrupt the other one. Um, so anyway, if you know people, if you know men whose, wife, whose wives run, run their lives or whose kids push them around, that's an inversion of authority. And if you know people who have pets that are spoiled, that make other people miserable, that are untrained, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, what I'm, the kind of thing I'm talking about. When you're around this kind of person and their their pets, there may be you know 20 people at a gathering. The pet runs the show. The pet pees wherever it wants to. It barks. It screams. It bites people. It, it chews on stuff. And you can't do anything about it because the person who owns it defends the pet because that person is the pet's servant. And usually this is a woman. You you know what I'm talking about. Women with the little dogs they carry around. Um, that's an authority inversion. That's a, that's a real symptom of authority inversion. Or a, a woman whose children control her and who then controls her husband on behalf of the children, that's an authority inversion. And in situations like that, obviously, spirits are going to control the dog, they're going to control the children. And they use the, they use, the, use, the, use the dog, they use the children, they use the wife to get control of the man. So that's not how life is supposed to work. So you, you have to have control. You have to have authority over your flesh. You have to have authority over your spirit. Um, one of the reasons that I am single, one of the many, many <laughs> reasons I am single, there's no, 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 use in being, no use to be proud. No use in being proud. I, I mean, uh, anyway, one of the uh, many, many reasons that I am single is that I will not have anything to do with, with a woman who wants to run things. You've got to have, if you're a man and you want to have things work in your walk with God, you've got to have somebody who is willing to let you communicate with God and get guidance and willing to support you in that and join you in that and then listen to what God tells you. You, you don't want someone who's just materialistic, trying to get pregnant so she can have her larvae, you know, and, and use you as a... Uh, you know, a husk, a, a host for her parasites, and and take your money and, you know, make your life miserable. A, a woman is not supposed to be your boss. She, life is hard. The world is against you. Satan is against you. When you come home, you're supposed to have someone who's on your side. Hello? 
there should be one person on earth who's always on your side. I mean, as much as possible within the limits of human imperfection. And I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, women just don't have that mindset anymore, and they get really angry and they're really proud, and they think they they think they're princesses, and that you have to. It's it's like you're supposed to go through some some sort of horrible video game, you know, series of challenges in order to get them, and they're supposed to make it as hard as possible, and you're supposed to treat them as though they're fragile and walk on eggs around, like this thing with Valentine's Day, you know. Um, retailers and manufacturers created this holiday to get money to, and to manipulate men. And so what happens? Well, women take this, this rallying cry up and they do, instead of siding with the men and saying, you know, this is silly, let's just go have dinner or whatever. Um, they turn it into, they become agents of, not of the man, the person that she's supposed to be siding with, she sides with his enemies, the people that want his money. And so as a result, well, you have to spend, you know, three or $4,000 on Valentine's Day or else you're a bad person. So, I don't know, it's a great example of, of warped authority, how, how authority can be turned around and twisted. Um, and, and if you have one like that, you got to walk on eggs around her all the time. You know, you can't tell her the truth about anything. Uh, and and if, you, if you do tell her the truth, she closes the door and runs off. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Women always say that men aren't communicative, but it's not true. Men are much more communicative than, communicative than women. Women never open up. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm generalizing. Women, but I'm saying typical women don't, don't open up. Uh, they say whatever you want to hear. And when they're trying to get you to open up and criticizing you for not being communicative, what they're really saying is, I want intelligence that I can use against you later. So I can so I can dominate you, and this is something women have to fight. You know, it's it's a you know men have to fight things like lust and selfishness and brutality and you know making a mess in the bathroom. What you know our faults. Everybody knows what men's faults are: infidelity. Um, and women have to fight with deceit and manipulation. They have to be conscious of it. They have to be aware of it. And a woman who can't, a woman who runs on emotion all the time, who can't step back and accept any type of criticism. Somebody has to be treated like a mental patient all the time, which is really the situation in a lot of cases. I don't want somebody like that in my life. I'm free right now, you know. I mean, I get up when I want, I go to bed when I want, I eat what I want, I say what I want, which is really what's important, and I worship as I want. So I don't want uh, any more inversion of authority in my life than I've already got. I, I want to get on top of the spirits that try to work against me, the people that try to control me, want to defeat my flesh, I'm not going to bring somebody in who's playing for the other team, you know. Uh, if, if I, by some miracle, get married, I'm going to be setting aside my own needs. I'm going to be setting aside my own desires so I can help this person to be built up, to be secure, to know that the future is, is all set because I am trying to do what's right for her. I don't want somebody who's just who's just trying to use me to get to things she can't get on her own. Um, by the way, I quit. I, I made a couple of videos and I mentioned Christian Mingle, which is this horrible Christian dating site that I joined. A friend of mine was nagging me, and I joined it. And the only people I heard from was two two kinds of people: women who are unbelievably totally unacceptable, and male scammers from Africa pretending to be women who were very obvious. And I would report them and turn them in and, I, you know, uh, tell them crazy things to make them go away. I told one of them I was a giraffe. They don't care. They, I mean, if there's, a, if there's any, if there's a sliver of hope that they can get some money out of you, they'll, they'll just take any kind of abuse. doesn't matter what you do. Uh, I finally quit. The other day I thought, I thought about it and I said, you know, I, I was very happy before I joined this site. And now I am unhappy when I deal with it. So goodbye. And I quit. Um it was really distressing. I, I kept getting these scammers coming after me. I mean, literally about 95% of the people that contacted me were scammers. And the women, I mean, it was like there was a lady who was 77. Um, there were women who, I, you know, and I, I don't want to pick on people. I, I've got my faults. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, a great catch. But I would get come on from women who are much older than I am or who weighed 300 pounds. And, you know, uh, men aren't women. Looks mean something to men because 
marriage is partly about romance, and sooner or later you're going to have to get in bed together. And it can't it can't be it can't be like eating liver, you know. It can't be like getting a root canal. There's got to be something there. A woman doesn't have to be a beauty queen. I've known women who were really not pretty at all, yet who were very, very attractive. Um, there's got to be something there. You can't, it, it can't be, you can't just look at your wife every time and say to yourself, I can't believe this happened to me. This is where I ended up. How, think how happy I was when I was alone, and now this is where I am. Ugh. And I know women will be very critical and say, oh, you're so shallow. Well, okay, would you date someone who's 5'3"? Yeah, okay. Seriously. Would you date somebody who uh, works at Burger King? Um, there are huge numbers of women in the United States who will go out with a man simply because they like his car. I don't. It never occurs to me to think about what a woman drives, how much money she has, uh, I, I, I will accept a wide variety of heights as long as it's not physically difficult, you know, to deal with a person. I mean, I, I, you know, someone six nine, well, that's that's going to cause some issues. I mean, a person like that, that's going to cause trouble. And if someone's three feet tall, yeah, that's that's a problem. But uh, lots of women out there will they have this this policy where they will automatically reject any man who's under six feet tall. And the funny thing about it is. Most men who are six feet tall are really about five, nine and a half because men lie about their height. They know that women want tall men. So if you're honest about your height, women think you're a, a midget. You know, if you say, well, I'm five ten, they think, man, that's short. But they don't realize all the six foot one guys they know are really five ten. Uh, so I don't know. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to take the bait. I'm not. It doesn't make me shallow if I want someone who's physically attractive. I don't expect a woman to have all the good things that I have going for me. I don't expect her to be as smart as I am. I don't expect her to have my experience, my knowledge, uh, whatever talents I have. I don't expect her to match all of those. So, uh, yeah, she, she needs to be somewhat attractive. And, and these women, I'll tell you what, I mean, not good. People say, oh, you know, look at you. Why would you want a, a decent-looking woman? Well, you know, what if I, what if I applied that standard to women? You know, so, oh, your IQ is 30 points lower than mine. I can't date you. Does that make sense? Everybody gives something. Everybody gives something up in a relationship, and you shouldn't feel bad about what you want as long as it's not crazy. So I gave that up, and I feel really good about it. Um, what's going to happen from here on out? I don't know. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. But I feel like. The truth is diet in America. There's no, there's no longer any point in telling people the truth or trying to find out the truth or trying to spread the truth because we're now under a flood. A, a, a tsunami has come in and it has just settled on us. A, a tsunami of lies, um, mostly from the political left. And I, you know, I, I try to be an apolitical person. I keep saying that and then I talk about politics. But the reason is, as I said before, the Antichrist is a political being, not just a religious being. So leftism is a religion. Um, I, I don't talk about how Donald Trump can come back and save us and all that. I don't, I don't promote conservative politics heavily, although God is conservative and wants us to be conservative, because I know political answers are not the answers. But it is, it is fair and correct to talk about the horrors of the political left, because um, that's what's being used to destroy us. And it has a satanic root. It's rooted in the spiritual realm, not in the realm of thought and reason. Um, what else did I want to talk about? God keeps telling me stuff, keeps giving me a revelation. I just can't keep up with it. There's so many things. Um, you don't, it's hard, hard to decide what to talk about, what not to talk about. And it's just a, remarkable the things he says. And I know it all comes from prayer in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you know, you'll pray in tongues a lot, and then things will just suddenly be clear to you. And you'll think, that's so obvious. Why didn't I know that before? One of the things God shows, shows me all the time is how the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light are, have their symmetry. They have complete symmetry. 
And I talked about this before, like Satan, Satan represents Jehovah, and the Antichrist is like Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is like uh, the spirits that, that Satan sends out after us, or the Internet. He's using the Internet to simulate the Holy Spirit. Um, and one of the things that he showed me today was uh, an interesting parallel about the, the Revelation. You know, in the, in the Revelation, there's this scene, I guess I'll call it, in which a woman clothed in the sun appears, and she's about to give birth, and a red dragon, a great red dragon appears, and he, his plan is to consume the child when it's when it's born. And the, the idea is that this child is, is Christ and the body of Christ, sort of. He wants to prevent that from happening. And I thought, there's always symmetry in the supernatural. Satan's children are trying to give birth to the Antichrist right now. That is really interesting. Both of these things are going on. Satan's children want to give birth to the Antichrist, just like the woman in the, in the Revelation, except that she's on the other side. And instead of a red dragon waiting to uh, devour the children, it's, it's God. God wants to destroy the children of the Antichrist. And he will because he's going to get his way. You know, hell is already, it already exists. It's ready. So that was a fascinating thing. The Bible says that in the end times there will be like uh, birth pains. You know, you know how labor, pain, labor pains work. First they're far apart and they're not too, they're not too uh, severe. And they get stronger and stronger and closer together and then the baby squirts out. If you're lucky. <laughs> it makes it sound really pleasant. And people tend to think about those labor pains as though they were the labor pains of Jesus. But Jesus was already born. These are the labor pains of the Antichrist. So that's an interesting thing to think about. The Antichrist has to, has to be born and he has to grow to be a man and, and fulfill his mission and then be consigned to the fires of, of hell. All these, all these things are happening now. It's it's so sad that we can't reach America anymore. It, it's so and it's so difficult to get out of the habit of wanting to uh, fix America. But it's so nice not to have to deal with it at the same time. It's it's nice to know I don't have to fast and say, oh God, please give us a good president, please give us a good Congress. Forget that stuff. I don't have to do that anymore because America's lost. I can say, oh God, help the body of Christ, help your children, help the people who listen, help them to be free of spot, free of blemish. Um, Fill us, fill us with the oil so we're not left out when the marriage comes. And I know that if I pray for those things for the people who can be blessed, that I'll get results. So that's just wonderful. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's going on that I should speak about. I guess I just want to say you need to speak in tongues a lot. You need to do it. People, Christians deny it, but... Um, those are, you know, those are the people who, go, who end up going off on tangents. So, like the anti-Semites, they don't speak in tongues. Um, the people from the dead churches that are ruled by Satan, the people that worship saints, they don't speak in tongues. Uh, the people who worship money, the charismatics who, who can speak in tongues but don't, they're not speaking in tongues. They didn't get the prosperity gospel, all those lies from, from God. They, they speak in tongues, you know, a couple of, couple of minutes a week. You're not going to get anything from that. So all the good things I'm learning, they come from God. He's preparing me. He's, he's pulling me out so I'm not engaging with this nonsense as much as I used to, this political stuff. Um, the bad times are coming, and you need to be ready. You need to have somebody saying, do this and do that. Someone who knows, you know, life is like a, a maze with rats in it, and God look, God can see into the maze. He, you know, he, he can stand up and look down into the maze, and we can't do that. We need to hear from the guy who can see where the cheese is. So if you're not speaking in tongues, you're not asking God for um, guidance, asking him for revelation, if you're trying to do things in your own strength, <clears throat> you're just you're not going to make it, and your family's not going to make it. And when you go to the people that are making it, they're not going to be able to do much for you. I'm not, I can't help people very much in the natural. I can't, I can't feed all the people I know that are going to suffer, that are going to be defeated. I can't house them all, the people who refuse to move from places where the Antichrist already rules, and they're saying, "Oh, I'm going to change my city. I'm here to be a light." No, you're not. You're not. You're there to be a victim. You're there. You know what a victim means? A victim is the word "victim" means a sacrifice. Look it up. I used to think it meant something else. I used to think it meant someone who was abused. 
not what it means. It, the literal meaning of the word victim is uh, sacrifice. And the word holocaust means sacrifice, which is also interesting because it came from the same cause. So you better get ready. You better connect yourself to God. People like me can't help you. The government's not going to help you. It's going to be against you. They're going to be the ones sponsoring the beheadings and so on. Um, telling the truth is, is, is a waste of time except to people that can receive it, and they are few in number. I think before I go, I guess I should mention one other thing. There's a lady I wrote about on my blog. Her name is Gina Carano, and she is a martial artist and actress. And she just got herself deleted, got herself canceled by the cancel kitties. She has appeared in a show called The Mandalorian, which I have not seen. It sounds like a music instrument. Uh, it's a Star Wars show. I, I don't like Star Wars. I always tell people, like, number one, it promotes the occult. Number two, it posits the existence of an absurd universe in which God is not the supreme, supreme being. That's not helpful. Uh, number three, it's uh, it's written on like a, a the level that a 12-year-old would understand. It, it's, it's written for children. And I don't mean a smart 12-year-old who's really good at math. I mean, you know, a 12-year-old who says things like library, <laughs> you know, that kind of 12-year-old. Um, Chief Wiggum's son, that kind of, that's the kind of 12-year-old Star Wars is written for. And also, it's just badly done. It's bad art, and there's no consistency to it. Uh, people have this idea. Nerds get together, and they say, oh, here's what George Lucas was really planning, and here's what he meant, and here's where all this is going. And in reality, George Lucas wrote this movie, the first one, and then he had no idea what to do after that. It became this gigantic craze, and he didn't know what to do because he hadn't planned for it. And there was no plan. There was, he didn't have a big chart on his wall saying, this is what's going to happen in this episode. This is what's going to happen in that episode. If that, if that had been the way things had worked, you wouldn't see people, actors being digitally removed <laughs> you know, from, from movies and replaced with other, other actors. There was no plan. He had no idea what he was doing. So the whole thing, it, it's internally, it, it contradicts itself, and it's inconsistent, and it's just it's dumb. Uh, movies aren't aren't well made, so uh, I don't like Star Wars, um, so I don't watch it. But this lady is apparently a conservative, uh, this Carano lady, <clears throat> and she Lucasfilms, which is part of Disney, says it will not hire, will not use her anymore, <clears throat> and the reason is she put up social media posts, which they said denigrated people based on their culture and their religious backgrounds. And I went and looked at the things that, that have been cited that this lady said. And it's, it's completely untrue. It's not even close to true. The accusation that they leveled against her, is not, doesn't even, it's not even in, in the same universe as the truth. She said, the, I think the, the post that really upset them, first of all, she, she criticized people, I'll tell you this, she criticized the mask thing, how people are wearing these masks that very obviously don't work. Um, Kids who watched Star Wars rose up in a big horde and demanded that she be fired because she she said she didn't like she made fun of the mask thing. And I thought, imagine it's 1955 and Lucille Ball comes out and says, I don't think the, the polio vaccine works. I think people who take that vaccine are silly. What would have happened to her? Nothing. Because people would have said, I don't care what somebody thinks about the polio vaccine, which was killing thousands of people back then and crippling. It wouldn't have meant anything to, to them. Uh, but if, if something like that happened today, well, you end up like, like Gina Carano. You end up out of a job. Not just out of a job, but out of a career. No one's going to hire her after this because the same people, the children of darkness, run the entertainment industry. Um, so that's one thing she did. And she apparently, now, this is something I don't know too much about because I don't do Twitter, but evidently with the, there's no such thing as a transsexual. Okay, it's or there's no such thing as a transgender person. Uh, none of the, for, I don't know why they use the word the term transgender. That amazes me. First we had transsexual, and then for some reason they decided transgender, which means basically the same thing. They decided that was the right term. And, but transgender means you've changed your gender, but at the same time they're saying, well, you, you're not really changing your gender because you're born this way. So if it's your if it's your real gender, how can you change it by having surgery to make yourself look like that gender. That doesn't make any, none of it makes any sense. The Bible says that the homosexuality and all these things, it says it's confusion. And boy, is that true. 
You remember when it used to be uh, just gays, and then it was suddenly L LGB, and then it was LGBTQ, RST, MNOP? It, it's confusing. And the pe even the people that are promoting this nonsense can't get a handle on it. And they never will. If you're, if you're hoping they're going to get a handle on it, it's going to make sense. It's, it's never going to make sense. Um, people are going to start identifying as toasters, you know. It's, that's our future. That's the, Well, that's the present. Anyway, they've got this thing now where they force you to use pronouns of their choice. I, I was okay with Bruce Jenner changing his name to Caitlin because I don't care what a man calls himself. I mean, some men are named Marion. I, I think you have the right to give yourself a dumb name. But when he insists that people call him a woman, well, no, that's a lie. You can't make me lie. That's not right. It's not right to make a person say something that's a lie. Um, well, the, the transgenders or whatever they're called now, um, they have this pronoun thing where you have to call a single person. You have to, you have to call that person they or them or Z or, or I don't know. There's a bunch of, I don't even, it's confusing. See, I'm, I'm confused because it's confusing, like the Bible says. I, I don't have any idea. I don't get into this stuff. I don't have a job where I have to do this stuff or else be fired, so I haven't bothered to learn the fine points. And even if I try, it, it's confusing and it's impossible to get straight. So apparently on Twitter, they, they were pushing her to put her pronouns on her Twitter profile. I don't know exactly what that means, why you would need to put your profile, your pronouns on your profile. I mean, but it, it's very important to the activists, to the, to the snowflakes, to the cancel kids. So she put up People, I guess, were putting up things like they, them, we, or something like that with uh, virgules, you know, slashes between the words. Well, she put up something like bebop boo, you know, those were her pronouns, which is uh, perfectly legitimate social commentary. It, 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 it means you, he, she disagrees with the, uh, with the cancel kids, but it's not cruel. It's not, uh, it's not offensive to any reasonable person. And, boy, they, they flipped out over that. They hated that. And then finally what she did that made people mad, was she, she said what I've said, what many people have said. She said uh, people need to realize that it wasn't just the Nazi soldiers that, that harmed the Jews during the Holocaust. First of all, it wasn't just the Germans and the Austrians. The, the Austrians always get a pass. But Hitler was an Austrian, not a German. Um, anyway, it wasn't just the Austrians and the Germans, and it wasn't just their soldiers. Uh, anti-Semitism was all over Europe and many people, you know, the guy who sold Anne Frank to the Nazis supposedly got $41 and they suffered terribly and died and he was happy with that. He, had, he got 41 bucks, and he was not rare at all. Uh, I know a lady who, was, who had to be sheltered during the Holocaust, a Jewish lady, and she said the, the French kids among whom she sheltered were much worse than the Austrian kids that she grew up with. They would do things like, uh, like they pushed a thumbtack into her forehead to see if a Jew could bleed. So anyway, I'm going off the track here. Anti-Semitism is a huge thing in Europe. Huge thing among black people, huge among Hispanics. Not, not too bad among American whites, but it's getting worse because it's part of leftism. Um, anyway, she said it wasn't just the soldiers that were doing this stuff. It was Hitler had, the Nazis had to get the German people to hate the Jews to the point where they would participate in this. And she said it's, it's the same way now because, I'm paraphrasing, um, the people on the left are creating create an atmosphere in which it's okay to abuse people like me who believe in the truth, who believe in God, who won't go along with the nonsense. Um, and she was correct. Everything she said was correct. And she was clearly, very clearly criticizing anti-Semitism as well as the cancel culture. And, and did, Lucasfilms said she was denigrating people's culture and religion. Yeah, you know, I read that, and it's every day I just get a slap in the face. You know, not a slap; it's like a two by four. Whenever I look at the news, you know, there's your your bat in the face. The truth is dead. The truth is dead. Stop talking to these people. Stop talking to these people. You are wasting your time. Stop hoping. Stop talking to the crack whore. She is not going to get up out of the gutter. And the sad thing is, this this lady, oh, you know, I don't know her, but best guess based on based on her appearance and what she does, probably not a Christian, probably doesn't know the Holy Spirit. Um, she has no one. To, she has no one to help her now. 
unless she's unless she's in line with God. If she were in line with God, she wouldn't have had that job in the first place. So uh, it's really it's really a bad thing to see. Um, I guess I'm just tossing her out of there, tossing her out there as one more example of something that shows me how far gone uh, America. I was going to say how far gone we are, but I, it's not we; it's you. Um, and I don't mean you personally. I mean it's the bulk of America, the bulk of the world. Uh, it's just a reminder of how far gone the world is, and, and you've got to know, you've got to choose your battles. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on people who can be saved, and you need to get away from this insane myth that you can fix a nation that has firmly decided it hates God. Sometimes I watch, I see these little little things on uh, the internet about how. Is Biden's approach to, to gun control and all the things that uh, the Democrats want to do. I enjoy firearms so much. I love to shoot, and I, I've been blasting squirrels all my. Uh, I had I had two squirrel, smoke squirrels yesterday. They weren't too bad. A little tough. It's, it's great to get them off my property. I don't know if it'll help because there's so many of them here. They're they're just they cover this place, but they literally are like rats. I mean, they they destroy things and they, they plant oaks. They plant trees that I don't want. So uh, it's great to get rid of them. Anyway, I really enjoy firearms, but I've, I've really got to accept the fact that I'm, if I live and Jesus takes his time returning, they're going to be gone. They're going to be taken away. I just got to say that that's how it is. I, you know, I join the NRA. I give them my dues. Hope for the best. But this is the future. And if I keep holding on to that, if I keep trying to hold on to the way things should be and the way they have been, um, I'm going to end up devote my life to a battle I can't win because um, America made its choice. You know, America made its choice. America's like a snake. You know, when you, when you cut a snake's head off, people used to think, it, you know, snakes move around after after you cut their heads off. Their heads move and they open their mouths and stuff. And people used to think that that was just some sort of reflex activity. And science has discovered that, that snakes remain conscious and alive after you cut their heads off. It takes them a long time to die. And they will bite you deliberately if you give them a chance. And America, that's what America's like. America's, America cut its own head off years ago, and it thinks it's still alive. It thinks, it's, it thinks it still has a future. But the body that sustains the head is going to be taken out. You know, that body is the body of Christ. And once the body of Christ is gone, um, God has no, no, no reason to sustain this place, no reason to keep it going. What a thing to see at night. It's astounding to me that I live in this time when all these things are coming to pass. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm going to quit. I'll probably talk for an hour. Um, speak in tongues every day. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Give up on America. Knock it off. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray, try, to, try to help people that you know can be helped, that God has told you that can be helped. Let go of the ones that God tells you to let go of. Give it up. You're not better than he is. He, he couldn't fix them, and that means you can't fix them. And if you're bored, get yourself an ice cream maker. This machine is wonderful. <laughs> My goddaughter is coming over tomorrow with her with her four brothers and sisters, and I've got three or four flavors of ice cream in the refrigerator. They want to use the pool even though it's freezing. I don't know what's wrong with them. So I don't know. Help who can be whoever can be helped and, and enjoy life and forget about this country because it, it has forgotten about you. Try to see the positive in what I'm saying. If, if you if you can't see the positive, you're really whether you want to admit it or not, you're really just pouting. Don't be spiteful. Just go with the future. Go go with the plan. Uh, things there are certain things that are going to happen, and you can either capitalize on them or uh, you can use them to flagellate yourself. So that's it from the Bubba Continuum. Uh, I'll be here when the cancel kids want to, you know, behead me in the yard or whatever it is they plan to do later on. There's no hope for me. <laughs> no hope of redemption for me. That's one of the other things about the symmetry of the supernatural. The, the, the kingdom of light is a kingdom of redemption, and the, and the, the cancel culture, left-wing, Antifa, BLM, uh, children of darkness culture, that's a, that's a culture in which you can never be forgiven. And it's, it's amazing. You watch famous people now. Their lives are being destroyed for things they did 40 years ago. There's no way you can get forgiveness. But I guess that's fitting because they're not going to get forgiveness either, the people that are doing these things. The ones who persist, they're not, they're going to, one day they're going to find out they, they, forgiveness is no longer available. So, uh, try to look for the positive in what I said, and have a great week.